are presently in one of the uh, four rain gardens that the city of Jacksonville maintains. This is actually known as the uh, Triangle Rain Garden. What we did is we took out a lot of the uh, asphalt that was here in the middle. We created uh, six or seven curb cuts in order to drain not only both roads but also the parking lot and a lot of the downtown area. Rainwater will pool into these rain gardens uh, and it functions uh, a lot of different varieties of ways. Rain gardens are one specific type of BMP that you'll find associated with stormwater runoff. A BMP basically is a best management practice. One of the most common types of BMPs, unfortunately, that you find in Jacksonville are ponds. And the reason why is because our seasonal high water table is so high. Another option to uh, treating stormwater runoff in Jacksonville are rain gardens. Rain gardens are a beautiful addition that you can put into your yard. It can vary in size and shape. And basically what you want to do is find a low-lying area within your yard and you're going to dig down a foot or two and what you're going to do is add some rock. Then you want to put some sand on top of that. Then you'll put some topsoil back in and then you'll want to plant native vegetation. Native vegetation works real well in North Carolina because it's used to going through periods of drought as well as periods of high amounts of water or standing water. A big difference between a rain garden and a pond is a pond always retains water. You should always see some level of water in your permanent pool. But in a rain garden, water will actually disappear within 24 to 48 hours. The plants that you put in are also very important. They're, again, used to being underwater for short periods of time, 24, 48 hours. And some of the species that you can pick are actually very beautiful. It's uh, very advantageous to your yard because one, stormwater runoff carries pollutants. So we don't want that to actually make it to our watershed. Putting it into a rain garden or into a pond is beneficial because it removes the number one contaminant, which is sediment, and then the number two contaminant, which are nutrients. The New River is actually on the 303 impaired list for sediment and nutrients. So every BMP that we put in place helps filter all the pollutants out before it gets to the watershed. So removing nutrients from a watershed is very important. And again, rain gardens are one beautiful way to do that. Um, some of the plants that you'll find in this rain garden like behind me are hibiscus, the dinner plate hibiscus, which is white. And we also have rose mallard. We have uh, the black-eyed Susan. We've got a wildflower mix. We've got the strawberry bush. We've got a high blueberry bush. Um, we've got wax myrtles. We've got cedars. We've got junipers. And these are all natural native plants that like nitrogen and ammonias and when that comes in into your stormwater runoff, they soak it up immediately and they put it into cellular growth. Uh, another important component, especially with the dinner plate hibiscus and the rose mallard, is you can see there's a lot of bees flying behind me. It provides a very important place for wildlife to go, especially our pollinators. You may have noticed in the, in the news over the last 10 years, there's a huge concern in the amount of decrease of pollinators that we find out in the, in the wild now. Too many of our bees and, and yellow jackets have died because of pesticides and, and destruction of habitat. So providing places for them to go in order to pollinate is very, very important. Rain gardens will remove stormwater runoff. It can reduce flooding in and around your home or your business. It provides a place for wildlife to come in and continue on. But most importantly is it can beautify your yard very cheaply. It doesn't take a whole lot of plants to put into a rain garden and they're relatively cheap and so it could it can make a very beautiful centerpiece within your yard. Probably most importantly is that rain gardens don't hold water like ponds, so rain gardens will not generate mosquitoes in your yard. And the important part about the rain garden is this water will regenerate our groundwater. It will go back into our groundwater and eventually maybe our aquifer. And that's one of the problems with ponds and surface runoff is we're not recharging our aquifer. So infiltration basins and rain gardens are really important because it's filtering all the pollutants out as the stormwater runoff goes through the garden, but we get clean water recharging our groundwater. So that's another important component
treatment of our rain gardens. There's lots of different plants that you can put into a rain garden and we've been slowly metamorphosing this one. Uh, you can have a rain garden with more of your wiry grasses and more of your wild plants, which I personally like, but others like more of a landscape type of looking with lots of flowers. And so this one specifically, we've slowly changed the species of plants to more flowering plants so that the businesses that you see around us actually have beauty in their front yard uh, or right out in front of their business. And uh, over the, the years, we've we've learned what does and doesn't work. This one is a mulched rain garden versus the one behind us we'll look at, which is actually a grassed rain garden. When we first built these 10 years ago, we weren't sure how the public was gonna perceive them and which they would like best. I will tell you from a maintenance standpoint, a mulched rain garden is actually a little bit easier to maintain spring, summer, and fall than a, a grassed one. With a grassed one, you basically have to mow every week. You have to mow and weed eat every week. Uh, with a mulch, because we have a hardwood mulch, which is very important because the hardwood mulch is actually what helps absorb some of those pollutants in your stormwater runoff, um, it doesn't float. So even though this fills up with water, mulch will not float out into the road. It, it stays intact where it is. Um, and we do have to weed some here and there, but as long as you stay up on, t on top of it, it's not that hard. It's like any garden, you gotta stay on top of the weeds. We actually have four rain gardens within the city of Jacksonville now. We have two here right across from City Hall and the post office. We actually have another one uh, at the intersection of Bayshore and Stratford. We inherited our fourth rain garden from DOT when the Highway 17 bridge was completed. There are two BMPs on either end. We inherited the actual rain garden on the right hand side over by the USO. This rain garden receives water off of Highway 17 as well as the bridge. And again, the purpose is to filter the stormwater runoff of any pollutants before the water actually reaches the new river or our watershed. What happens is when the water goes over the, from the forebay into the main body of the rain garden, this will fill up with water and slowly the water will filter down and it'll stay there again for one to three days. After that, it slowly infiltrates into that under drain or that pipe after it's been cleaned of all the pollutants and it will be discharged directly into the river behind me. It's the last point of contact to clean any pollutants or any contaminants before that water hits our watershed. And again, the New River starts and ends in Onslow County, so if it's polluted, the only people we can blame are ourselves but the only people that can make it better are ourselves. And so what we're trying to do is you know, count every storm drain, put in as many BMPs as possible between large areas of impervious surface area or BUA, putting rain gardens and or ponds or swells or infiltration basins, put as many in place so that we can remove as many contaminants as possible before it enters the river. We live in Onslow County because we enjoy the New River. We like wetlands and we like uh, the area uh, that's around us. Help be part of protecting that. So installing a very simple rain garden in your own yard, again, would not be very hard, would not be very costly, but it could be very beautiful. Again, you just find a low-lying area in your yard that you always have a mud puddle in after a rain event and it takes a day or two to go away. That's the perfect place to put a rain garden because apparently it's a low topography in your yard and that's where the water pools. Well, if you put a rain garden in a spot, what once was a mud puddle becomes a very beautiful, aesthetically pleasing rain garden.